What's up, guys? I hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, we're going to talk about free fall, what that exactly means, and how we can solve problems of things that are in free fall. So let's take, for example, a ball. Let's jump right into it. Now, when this ball is hanging out, let's say, in the sky above the Earth's surface, there is only going to be one force that's acting on this object. And that one force is the force due to gravity. Okay, now, this is neglecting air resistance, so there's no air resistance here. I'll say that. No air resistance. So the only thing acting on this ball is the force of gravity. And guys, that's the definition of free fall. Free fall is when only gravity is acting. And it does not matter if the object is falling towards the ground or if it's traveling upward, which is sometimes a common misconception, guys. If I have a ball that's traveling upwards towards max height, so the motion is this way, still the only force acting on this object is gravity, right? The only force is still the force due to gravity. So just remember, an object can be traveling up or down. So we can go down, but also, guys, up, an object is still in free fall. Fall does not mean to the ground. And I'm sorry that you've been tricked your entire life into thinking that. You're falling. You have to be heading towards the ground. That is not the case, okay? So when we look at an object that, say, dropped from a cliff, all right, if I say uh, dropped from a cliff or a bridge or dropped from anywhere, we see this word dropped and we know that the velocity initial or V naught is going to be zero meters per second. And that's kind of like the first thing that you need to understand when you are solving for um, free fall questions, that the initial velocity when I am dropped is going to be VI. Now, when I'm thrown upward, To go up, I'm going to need some initial velocity or V-naught as well. So this will usually be given. I am thrown directly upward with, say, 6 meters per second squared. And then after we have our givens, we're going to use our two kinematics formulas. D equals V-I-T plus 1 half A-T squared. If you are on the AP level, they'll call this D-X. So you might see X equals X-naught T plus 1 half a t squared if you're on the AP level. But D and X are essentially going to be the same thing. And once you know that an object is dropped, you are going to have all the information. And there's only going to be two types of questions that they're going to ask. Type 1, I am dropped and I fall towards the ground below. They're going to either ask you how long did it take to fall, Or they're going to ask you how far did it fall? Ooh, that's a terrible line, Finn. How far? Now, the givens, it will just depend on the givens and what they tell you. So, for example, here, I see this dropped. I know that VI is equal to zero meters per second in both cases. All right, and I know that A is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared in both cases. If you're on the AP level, they will let you use 10. <laughs> then, essentially, to, if I want to know how, uh, how long did it take, oh, I didn't put long in here, how long, that means they're going to ask for T. This is what we want to know, and then the height, D, will be given. All right, so this would be like I drop a I drop a brick from 50 meters high. How long did it take to hit the ground? And then we'll just have D equals V I T plus one half A T squared. And we'll say, like I said, this this cliff or this bridge or this building was 50 meters high. You will just solve for how long did it take to fall. In this case, I will give you T will be given. Maybe let's say one second. 
and I will want to know how far did it fall. Once again, same formula, D equals VIT plus one-half AT squared, and then we'll have our givens, and now you can just solve for D. Those are the two types of questions. In a very, very rare case, they might ask this question here, and that is, how fast is it going after a certain amount of time? How fast is it going? And they'll do how fast is it going after some time? Or they'll say after some distance. All right, guys, it doesn't make it any more difficult. We'll still have our same drop. VI is zero meters per second. We'll still have A, which is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. Now they're going to want to know after some amount of time or some amount of distance, what is going to be our final speed? So one of these two will be given. And then we're just going to use our other kinematics formulas, our how fast formulas. So we will have either how fast is it going after a certain amount of time. Right now we can find out this how fast is it going or how fast is it going after a certain distance. And once again, if you're on the AP level, it'll just be written as this because we don't use d uh, plus 2a displacement. So you'll see that written on the AP level. But guys, those are the only ways that I'm going to ask you questions when it comes to free fall. As far as thrown upwards, right, free fall upwards, right, so now I'm going to give you some given vi, and I'll ask things like how high. Or I'll ask how long to max height. So now we have situations where the ball is going to travel up to max height. Boop, 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 boop. Now when it gets here, what do we know about max height? Well, we know the speed at max height is zero meters per second. So now I have some given. I have my VI, which would be given. I threw a ball upward at, say, 20 meters per second. Then I have A. Now remember, if this VI upwards, the direction of motion is upwards, if the direction of motion is upwards, let's call it up positive and down negative. Well, little gravity here, the acceleration due to gravity, that is going to be minus now because it's opposite the direction of motion. When we say that acceleration hurts velocity, we have to give it a minus sign. We know that the VF is going to be equal to zero meters per second, and this is at max height. All right, and now they'll ask for how high, X or D, depending on what class you're taking or what formulas you use. And then we have VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Boom. And the same for how long to take. VI is going to be given. A hurts that VI because it slows it down, so we have minus 9.8 meters per second squared. VF at max height is still going to be zero meters per second. Now they want to know how long did it take to get there? Very simple. VF equals VI plus AT, and this is going to be usually given. These formulas are all going to be given on your reference table. Check out, I'll do horizontal projectiles next for objects that aren't exactly in free fall. You could check that video out right here. I will leave it, let's see, I'll leave that video right here. This would be um, for horizontal projectiles, and then when I get to it, I will put an angled projectile right here, and if you want to subscribe to the channel for more help, put that right here. Guys, have yourself an awesome day.